I will show you how to import data from CSV files into Python using pandas. I will use spider as my IDE for this task as it is convenient to explore pandas data frames. What is actually your favorite IDE or text editor in Python? Just leave a comment below, it would be nice to rank and discuss them. First we need to import pandas, it is common to use the abbreviation pd for pandas. Next we can change our current working directory. I have done another video um, on how to do this in Python. I advise you to avoid a specific path as this will only work on your machine. Instead we keep the CSV file in the same folder where we keep our Python script. By default this will be our current working directory. Then we run our script. Let's specify the file name and as you can see we look at some gold prices. So this is our file name. I will just copy paste that and go into spider. So I assign the file name to file underscore name. Of course you can always do these things in one go but personally I like to separate them and then change and modify my code for different files. Then we use the read underscore csv function in pandas. It is common to refer to df as the imported data will be a pandas data frame. But of course you can use any other name you prefer. If you work with spider you can inspect the data directly. Otherwise I suggest using the head or tail method. And now in spider we can directly inspect the data frame or we can use the head method to obtain the first five observations or the tail method to see the last five observations. You can see that additional columns were imported with missing values. NAN refers to missing values in pandas. That can happen depending on your original CSV file. We will address this a little bit later. I will now mention a few important options. Of course there are many more options. Please feel free to leave a comment if you want to explore other options and problems. First the header option. This is quite useful if you want to modify the name of your variables. The default behavior is that column names are based on the first line of your CSV file. You can change that default setting using for instance header is equal to none. So this would assume that the first line does not contain the variable or the column names. And now as you can see our gold spot price is regarded as a first observation. It's in my first row looking at the index and it's not the name of the column. Of course this causes an issue in this particular case. So be very careful and ensure that this is really what you intend to do. Second the index underscore call option can be used to select a column as your index. In our case we have a time series. Gold prices over time. And the date column is our index. Hence we can add the following option. So we specify the date as our index using the index underscore call option. And as you can see our date column becomes the index. Which makes in our case perfect sense. Now there are many ways to remove these unwanted columns that also got imported. I will show you one way where I reassign my data frame selecting only the gold spot price. Note that date is already our index so I don't really have to specify that. So I refer to df which goes back to the original data frame and I select only the gold spot price. You need to be very careful with rectangular brackets. So open closed rectangular brackets as you should know refers to a python list, an empty list to be precise. Thus the previous command passes a list with one element 
to select a subsection of the original data frame. If we remove one layer of brackets, the object changes to a pandas series. So if we run line 33, we get a data frame type, where date is our index and the gold spot price is our variable or column. If we remove one layer of rectangular brackets, the type changes to a pandas series. So you have to think very carefully whether this is really what you want. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions and check out our content on www.unicarn.com and Udemy. You can find all the links in the description and also on our channel pages. And check out our latest Udemy course focused on getting started with startup. I see you in the next one.